There's a new player in the M4 category, and we're gonna be checking this guy out in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. That's right, a new M4, a new brand, a new gun. I mean, it's an M4, right? So how new can it be? Well, yeah, but they've done some new things. I, I gotta give them some credit, and it's a brand new brand, and they're they're stuffing a lot of features into a, a rather affordable price point, too. So this is one I wanted to do, and wanted to share with you. The brand is called Arcturus, A-R-C-T-U-R-U-S, um, and it is right now kind of an Asia market release, and we're gonna see it probably trickle around the rest of the world here as they start to distribute out. I'm gonna give you a kind of a rundown of the final production version of the Arcturus PDW AEG. So here we go, uh, looking at the outside, then we're gonna go in. Externally, it is a full metal AEG. I'm gonna lift it up for you guys to see, guys and gals. What you get, let me show you what is polymer on here. The grip, that's it. Literally, that is it. Everything else is metal on this gun. Uh, it is, that's the only thing you're gonna get on here is the grip. The grip actually is pretty cool. In the box, you get two back straps. This is the big fat one, or you can do the skinny one, it slides off a little bit. Of, it's definitely on there with some friction. It's got a clip in there. You can get this one off, slide the other one on if you wanna do something a little less fat. I do like the fat ones with the comfortable back. If you're gonna be playing all day long, it's cool. It's cool they give you both in here too. Um, of course, in here you got some venting at the bottom, and that, that is the polymer part. Everything else here is metal. There's some interesting stuff going on I'm gonna talk about in a second, but let's start with the tip and work our way back. Outside we have a sound amplifier, so big old fat noise maker. It's gonna have a nice crisp pop to it. It's gonna let your opponents know you're there, but in a PDW situation, like so playing CQB indoors, this is, I love it, because it's that loud snap and people are like, hmm, I don't know if I wanna go over there. I, I always think this is great. So people try to quiet theirs down. I wanna be the loud guy. So that sound, that crack and all that, that lets people know you're there and they're gonna go, hmm, maybe I'll go a different direction. Most people at least, so I do like that. Um, moving on down, the barrel is recessed in here, so the inner barrel is a little shorter, but it's a PDW, it's designed for indoor. It's not gonna suffer an accuracy, actually accuracy is pretty darn good. Outer mail rail here is full metal. It is M-lock all the way around, so you can add your M-lock sections. You do have two swivel sling attachment points here, left and right, and a third on the bottom. So you actually have three ways to attach. It's kind of interesting they put one on the bottom. I don't know if I'd ever use it there, but you could if you wanted to. Since it is M-lock, you can, like I said, put whatever attachments on. On the top, you get Picatinny rail, front to rear, all the way down, that's normal. Uh, standard charging handle here in the back opens up the fake bolt, which has access to the rotary style hop-up inside metal hop-up, plastic dial. Press the button on the side here, it snaps on forward. Go on back. PDW style stock, you got a little recess button here. I like they did that, because that way you don't actually bump it. You've got a six position here on this, which is actually cool. Six positions, and it's long. It's really long. It's long to the point where it's comfortable. Usually these things are like, in for me, about two more positions, at least one, maybe two. You get about that normally, and it just feels like it's just too close. It just feels too small. But this one, you get the extra two. It goes all the way out. It's nice. This is all metal, including the pad. It's got like this big, beefy, gnarly meat grinder texture. I like that actually, that was pretty cool. But it's not uncomfortable. I mean, even my t-shirt right now, I can jam it in there. It feels like it's gonna stay put, but it doesn't like eat your shoulder up by any means. Uh, like I said, the recess button, so you don't actually bump it. To access the battery, you're gonna unscrew this little cap right here, and you're gonna access it. To me, a connector's inside on here. Space is a little limited, um, but not too bad. I'm gonna leave that off right now as we talk about it. Um, moving on this way, we have a sling attachment point here on the one side. I'm sure you can invert it, maybe, I don't know. Um, if you're the other side, but this is mainly set up for the, the righties. Fire selector is also set up for the left thumb side, which means righty gun. And the mag release, it's oversized. It is huge. It actually sticks out really far, like super far. But in the box, they include a normal one, which is kind of cool. So you get both options. You get this extended one and like a whole other mag release in here. It's kind of cool they included the second one. Pretty neat. And in the box, let me grab these for you here, you get two magazines. It's pretty cool. Both of them are metal. Uh, you get a metal high cap right here. It's the uh, flash mag style, which is super cool, again, for the price. Uh, you got the metal cable in. It's not the cheap one with the plastic cord. So you have flash mag style in here. Open the door, dump them in. Full metal flash mag. And a full metal mid cap, which is also pretty cool. You get a pair. So they give you kind of both options. They're both long. Mid cap's extra long. I like these kind of extra long ones. Pretty cool. 
got a little heft to it too. Very well made metal mid caps. These are definitely made of steel. You can feel, you can tell. So they're gonna be mad. Uh, pretty well made, pretty hold up to uh, the abuse over time. And it's cool, they gave you two in the box. Going to the receiver, upper and lower, they are blank. They are clean. The only exception is the Arcturus, Arcturus I'm gonna call it Arcturus, Arcturus logo right here and a unique serial number right below it and Cal six millimeters. That's it, that's all you've got. Etched in markings in the receiver. They're not actually, they're actually debossed. They're part of the metal stamped in. They're not just like laser etched on there, but I do like the clean look. Everything else is nice and smooth. So it doesn't like scream another brand. Look at the receiver. I'd say finish quality of KWA. Good finish, looks nice. I'm pretty happy what they did. It doesn't look cheap because it doesn't feel cheap. And this thing's metal tip to toe. Uh, definitely a pretty solid build. All right, now the last piece uh, on this, the sights. While super cool, I, I do think it's cool to have flip up, like press the button, they flip up, they, they kind of, this one does too, you press and they flip, but it's the 45 sights. Now I get it, you're gonna run optic up here and all whatever, but you get these 45 sights in there, which is cool because in the real world, you know, you got it off the side and you can go back to your red dot or your magnified and you can do this cool thing, right? But at Airsoft, when you do this, the BBs don't fly straight, they, they kind of do a hook because you're changing the trajectory in the way, so, or they'll fly a different way because of hop up. So when you turn the gun this way, it affects how straight your BBs fly. That's the only downside. I think it's cool. Just maybe swap them out for something else. The AK one comes with some cool sights. Maybe they can swap those in or, you know, give people the option. I think it's neat, but practical wise, it's a little weird, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you get free sights, right? Most guns don't even come with sights anymore. So I can't complain too much on that. One. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about internals. That's why I left this cap off from earlier. So inside of here, you have access to your quick change spring system. Of course, the battery plug, limited space. The space in for this is probably, it goes all the way down to my knuckle in there, but let's say, right? Yeah, right to my first knuckle and then that. So you've got, let's just say, that much space. You've got enough to put a buffer tube style LiPo battery in there. No problem. You can get it in there with the wiring, put it in, you're good. No problem. It's nice and fat. It should fit in there. No problem with that. No big deal at all. In here is the uh, actual quick change spring, which means you can access it through here. That's super cool. You don't have to take your gun apart. You want to change the power? Boop, go right in. So flathead screwdriver, boop, boop, little turn, quick, boom, pops out. Do what you got to do. Push it back in, lock it back in. New spring, new power, ready to go. Also, they have a snap trigger in here, an actual, you can hear it. That is your kind of like a snap trigger. It has a definitive break. You can feel it break. You can, there you go. Just give you some clickiness, some clickiness. A good spring, and you when you get to the breaking point, you can feel it kind of pause and stop. I Whatever they're using in here, it's not your traditional snap trigger. It's not like an electronic trigger, like a Titan MOSFET, but there's definitely a coolness to it. I like how there's a point and then it breaks like a real firearm, and it gives you that ability to find that reset. Just, you know, if you want to flutter the shots, you can do that. I think that's really cool. And it lends to the trigger response when we get into the shooting test. Uh, I think it's pretty cool what the trigger response is on this as well. So all in all, I think they did a pretty good job putting the decent internals in here. The mech box is even painted black. Uh, you know, they didn't have to do that. So, I mean, just like a couple extra little finishing touches, you know, to kind of like a, a black outer coating on it. So all in all, I mean, I think they've done a pretty good job for an entry that has an interesting price point. All right, slapping a battery in this thing and taking it to the chrono. But as it's shooting right now, still under 400, no problem. As, but again, right now we're looking at Asia market on this and it's gonna be trickling around the world as more places get it. I'll be putting more links to where you can pick this thing up worldwide down below in the description box. But all in all, pretty good. Trigger response was good, like I said earlier, and uh, the full auto, like doing full auto right at a fire test, it's pretty darn good too. So all in all, definitely can tell these put some good internals in here on that 11.1 LiPo to run these tests. All right, that's it. That's what you get. All of this and, oh yeah, you do get an Allen key in the box to put these sights on. I, cool sights. I mean, I'm gonna run an optic anyway, so I kind of would keep them just for the, the 45 look. Uh, not really practical, but it's still pretty cool. All in all, I like the gun. I really like the price tag. It's in the lower 200s of uh, US right now in Hong Kong pricing. So pricing may vary. Your price may be different uh, when you get into taxes and tariffs in your country as these start to get around and shipping costs, which are always um, a, you know, a challenge if you're gonna order directly from Hong Kong, You know, factoring the shipping. With shipping and all, you should, should still be well under $300. So it gets you into that $200 price point. I think this thing is uh, still priced very right for what you get, all this metal, all this stuff and pretty good. Right, 
extras and the grip and the sights and a pretty male build and all this stuff and a nice rail, like a very nice, nice CNC rail. Um, for that price point, I'm rather impressed, honestly, for the price point play. Um, if this thing was priced at 400, I'd be like, mm, it's got a lot of fighting to do to, to keep up with the mark. But I mean, where it sits right now, you get a lot of bang for your buck on this gun. So it's definitely a brand to look into. I'm not sure if the price is going to stay here, if it's going to play around and move up or down. Like I said, it's still a pretty new brand. But uh, if it sticks here, I think these guys are going to make a mark uh, as a new company in the industry. So anyway, guys and gals, if you want to know more about this, let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to do my best to get you more information. I also have links down there to talk about this and the other M4 variants. It's not just the PDW. They actually have a bunch of different ones. I think three other different links of the M4 or two more to, to round out for three right now with more to come. But uh, as always, I'm interested to hear what you guys say. I know it's like, oh, another M4, but M4 sell, you know? So anyway, let me know in the comment section below. I'm all ears. But until next video, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.